So let's move on to discuss some cases that uh, show examples of integrative hemorrhage and how you might approach it. For this first case, we're looking at a 41-year-old man who passed out in an elevator. I have a couple of images for you here. So what you see is some axial CT images through the level of the basal ganglia. Got a big hemorrhage here on the left. It's uh, involving both the patamen and the thalamus, kind of eradicating the uh, posterior lobe of the internal capsule there. You have a little bit of intraventricular hemorrhage. And uh, again, like this is extending adjacent. So when you think about your systematic approach, you want to think about how many hemorrhages are there. So this patient has one. Uh, it's centered in the left basal ganglia there. This is a relatively young patient. Now, some additional history I didn't give you uh, when we started out is this patient was hypertensive. Uh, so when we're thinking about that, like this ends up being a hypertensive hemorrhage. So you've got an acute hemorrhage. It's in the setting of hypertension. The most common locations we've talked about uh, being basal ganglia, thalamus, pons, uh, the cerebellum. The hemispheres are relatively less common, but it's such a common finding that uh, you'll see them in the cerebral hemispheres relatively commonly. The mortality rate is pretty bad, and negative prognostic factors include the size of the hematoma, uh, serial expansion, spot sign, which is contrast to crevicating into the hematoma, and uh, then also intraventricular extension, which this patient had. And if you think about our, our imaging approach to this patient, so we got the CT. Uh, this person has a relatively young age. Uh, he was only 41 years old. It was not normotensive. Uh, otherwise, it was sort of a classic appearance for a hypertensive hemorrhage. But in this case, uh, we wanted to go on to CTA and MRI. And uh, this patient had both, and they were ultimately both normal. 